Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 55, and what I'd like to look at today is some sample problems. I'd like to start with sample problems that I would consider to be level one difficulty. And what we'll do is we'll solve for centripetal acceleration or centripetal force where we may know the mass and the speed, or we may know um, the radius or the diameter and other variables like that. These are all problems where we might have to figure out the speed first using the circumference, um, but then we're going to be able to calculate centripetal acceleration or force uh, quickly thereafter. These are what I would consider level one problems, introductory problems to circular motion. Let's look at the whiteboard now and we'll solve some problems. All right, now that you can see this uh, beautiful rendition of a carousel, we can solve our next problem. What we have is the Saratoga carousel, and it's going to make 15 cycles during the entire trip, which is three and a half minutes. The diameter is 12 meters. We want to find two things. Find the centripetal acceleration and the speed of the riders. Now we already know that if we're talking about a circle, the centripetal acceleration is going to be inward and the velocity is going to be tangent. So the directions are predetermined for centripetal forces and centripetal accelerations. But in this case, what we need to do is determine the centripetal acceleration, which as we know is V squared over R, and we're going to need to find the V. Now, we don't have the V, so that's going to be something we need to find first anyway. But let's look at this 15 cycles in three and a half minutes. Now, first of all, three and a half minutes is three times 60 and then another 30. So it's 180 plus 30. So it should be 210 seconds. And I think what we should do is just get rid of that and put 210 seconds. Now, some of you may not believe that that's the case. So let's just do 3.5, 3 3.5 times 60 is 210. So that verifies that. Now, what we do need is how long it takes to make one oscillation. If we write it like this, 15 cycles over 210 seconds, that's going to give us a frequency. And that's a good number, 15 divided by 210, which is 0 0.0714, et cetera, et cetera, hertz. But for our velocity equation, we have to remember that it's distance over time. And the distance of a circle is 2 pi r. And the time of a circle is known as the time period. So actually, we're going to use capital T. Frequency is not capital T. What we need instead is a reciprocal. Now, the reciprocal of frequency is the time period. And what we could actually have done is just done 210 divided by 15, which happens to be 14 seconds. It's a much cleaner looking number. And that's not always going to be the case. But in this case, it looks cleaner. It's just a whole number, it's not a decimal at all. The frequency is, is uh, much more imprecise because we have to round. Now, we could have taken this frequency and found the reciprocal, hit the x to the negative 1 button as well. That being said, if I want to find the speed of the riders, I'm going to put 2 pi times r, we know diameter. Well, that's easy to fix. The radius is? six meters, which is half of the diameter. So let's just do that. That's a pitfall that you may have fallen into. And divide that by 14 seconds. Two times pi times six, 37.68 divided by 14. The riders are traveling at 2.7 meters per second. Now, if we take that number, and we plug it in for the centripetal acceleration, 2.7 meters per second, the entire thing squared. 
Now watch out, if you just do 2.7 meters per second squared, that's gonna look a lot like an acceleration. So watch out for that, that's why I put it in parentheses, so I know the whole quantity is squared, not just the seconds. And then, and of course, because we have an acceleration to begin with. And then finally, the radius was six meters. So 2.7 squared divided by six, the centripetal acceleration is 1.21 meters per second squared. So as far as this problem goes, the centripetal acceleration is 1.21 meters per second squared. The velocity is 2.7 meters per second. And I drew one of the most realistic looking carousels, I think, in the history of mankind. All right, the next problem we're going to look at is finding the centripetal acceleration of the moon. Now, what I had to do is look up a few pieces of information. I found the time period to be 27.3 days, and the radius of orbit is 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters, and that's the distance from the Earth to the moon. And as the moon travels, it creates a radius around the Earth in terms of uh, that distance. Now, in order to find centripetal acceleration, we do v squared over r. The radius is already given, but we need to find the velocity. And we're going to assume that the orbit is effectively circular. So when we do v equals d over t to find the speed, we need the circumference, which is 2 pi r, over the time period. Now, we already have r again, and we need t. But the problem with t is it's in days, so we need to convert. So 27.3 days. All right, now, this is going to be a double conversion. One day is 24 hours. And then one hour is 3,600 seconds. So that would mean days cancel, hours cancel, and we're left with seconds. So what I'm going to do is take my calculator, 27.3 times 24 times 3600 and we get quite a large number in seconds it's two three five eight seven two zero seconds all right well if that's the case now it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in so v equals 2 pi 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters all over two, three, five, eight, seven, two, oh, seconds. All right, so to find the speed of the moon, <clears throat> we're going to take two times 3.14 times 3.8 second EE8 and hit equal, and then divide it by two, three, five, eight, seven, two, zero. So the speed of the moon is 1,011.7 meters per second. All right, so the moon's traveling over a thousand meters per second. We're going to take that V and plug it in for our centripetal acceleration equation. So 1011.7 meters per second, the whole thing squared. Watch out for the units. If you don't have the parentheses, it may look like an acceleration. And then divide it by 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. And when we do that, I already have the number in there, so I'm going to hit squared and then divide by 3.8 second EE8. And the centripetal acceleration of the moon is 0 0.0027 meters per second squared. Now, what I'd probably write is 2.7123 times 10 to the negative third meters per second squared.